welcome back uh, to my series of videos on authoritarianism. In the last video, we were talking about how a lot of folks who don't identify as progressives have been condescended to, um, told they're bad or stupid, and been labelled with very negative labels like sexist, um, fascist, racist, transphobe, by some of the louder elements on the uh, left. And um, when Clinton called those who were considering, well, let's say at least not voting for Clinton, but voting for Trump, when she called them deplorables, it was like to many of them who were feeling uh, that their culture was going too far away from their own norms, that Clinton was siding with these folks who were happy to morally condescend to people with different politics by calling them fascist or racist or sexist or whatever. Because there was Clinton calling them deplorables. And, um, yeah, and by calling somebody deplorable, you say you're other than me and you're worse than me. And if you are running for president, that's kind of scary because you're telling me you're not even going to respect me in how you run the country. Of course you're going to push me away into the arms of your opponent. So, um, even if he is, unfortunately, in the case of Trump, someone with clearly authoritarian tendencies. And uh, now, what happened when Trump got elected? Well, a lot of our friends on the left uh, were really scared because the election of Trump represented conditions of normative threat to them on the left, right? Now, think about it. Trump wasn't just the country electing somebody with more conservative politics. No. Trump is, to, for many folks on the left, um, quite despicable as an individual. Not only does he disagree with, uh, obviously, left-wing politics. Uh, that's not actually true. A lot of uh, Trump's economics are really quite leftist. But certainly, um, socially, culturally, uh, Trump comes off as being a lot more conservative. So many um, folks on the cultural left see a guy get elected who they find nasty. So now this isn't about politics. This is about um, them finding themselves in a country of people that could vote for a man who they wouldn't even want to talk to. They wouldn't even want to have in their house, who to them is morally despicable, right? So now these folks on the left feel like, oh my God, is this the America that I thought I was a part of? Is it in fact that not just that people are different from me in America politically, but that my fellow Americans are bad people, are nasty people, would not just support someone with different politics, but would actually support a man who is sexist, who would actually support a man who is racist. Because if that's so, I don't understand my country anymore. In other words, what those folks on the left started to feel was what some of those folks on the right felt that caused them to vote for Trump in the first place, which is moral and cultural alienation. Yeah, that the group were the norms of the group were so far from their own individual norms, further than they that the distance was bigger than they thought, that they feel threatened. They have to start reining in their country, right? Their country is going too far away from where they're at. They feel, just like I said in the first video, that I don't understand my country anymore. Or worse yet, my country doesn't understand me. My country is becoming somewhat appalling to me. Okay, So many folks on the left, they saw that in the election of Trump. And because it was so shocking to them, because it was so obvious to them that Americans would never vote for a man like Trump, you know, with that nasty remark on the bus, you know, about grabbing women and all that stuff. I mean, so obviously such a nasty man. Because it was so shocking to them, the conditions of threat were all the stronger. And so the reaction on the left has been, well, guess what? Somewhat authoritarian. You have seen folks on the left in reaction, in reacting to the normative, reacting to the normative threat, excuse me, wanting to do some of the things that Trump wanted to do to his opponents, like take down free speech. There's Trump wanting to not let the New York Times print things that he doesn't like. And then we are seeing increasingly on the 
I will call them authoritarian left, the shutting out of conservative speakers from campuses. Why? Because these folks on the left say we are threatened. They actually use the language of violence by conservative speech and opinions. Wow. Okay, wow. So you see, for example, students at Berkeley um, being violent, setting things alight, destroying property to keep out um, a conservative speakers. So the obvious one is Milo Yiannopoulos, of course. Uh, but Milo Yiannopoulos doesn't advocate violence. But the people reacting to him are saying, and this is critical, this is a very authoritarian thing to do. Your speech is itself violent. That justifies physical violence against you to stop your speech. Okay. Um, and, but as I say, it's not just Milo, right? There are other conservative speakers who, even before Trump was elected, uh, were being um, kept out, like... Um, Condoleezza Rice, I know, was another speaker who had a who, who had a problem getting a speaking gig. I think she was invited and then disinvited, or uh, because her politics did not conform. Her politics did not conform. Okay, so the authoritarian reaction to lack of conformity um, that is identified as being uh, too far away from acceptable moral norms. The authoritarian reaction is to shut it down institutional coercion, to use authority to stop it happening. So you see folks on the left, right, um, at, in campuses especially, using university authorities, um, and for example, uh, so like one trick is that authorities will impose massive security fees on conservative speakers that cannot be um, provided, right? The money can't, for the security can't be provided for maybe the conservative or even the libertarian group that might be inviting a more conservative speaker. And so then the speaker can't come. Okay. So they're using these kind of mechanisms to shut down the opposition. The point is that they're coercive. They're authoritarian because they're coercive, right? Okay. So there's the authoritarian left-wing reaction to the rise of authoritarianism on the right in the form of Trump. We'll be continuing from there in the next video. Thanks for joining me.